In this video, we're going to talk about uh, performance with TCP dump, specifically capturing package life. So, um, a number of these options we'll talk about have been covered in other videos in the TCP dump module, so we're going to wrap them up quickly here. So, three things we want to focus on. The first is domain name resolution. So, TCP dump has the ability to resolve names. If we use just say we're stiff on this interface, by default it actually tries to resolve every IP address that comes across the wire. And for each one of those, it has to resolve, it has to create a DNS um, request to the DNS, to your local um, resolver settings, to that DNS server, which will take some time. So it has to wait for every reply back before it can actually record that packet. So this causes extra problems. Also, in a network security monitoring setting, it could be an issue because if there's some traffic and you're reading it through it and it has some t attacker's host in there that you're resolving and maybe he has um, control over a DNS server, he may be able to see that you or made an attempt to re resolve his address. So as it makes it way, its way to, um, as the DNS request makes its way to his server, thus alerting him that you're investigating his traffic. So that's another reason not to do, to use, uh, to keep the uh, name resolution off. To do that, we use the dash NI option. You can see now it's just the IP addresses. It didn't try to resolve anything. Just a quick demo of that again. Let's just print one packet here. And so you can have the IP addresses much faster anyway. And now we have the resolution here. And it actually tried to use my host name for this. So it pulled out the uh, vagrant um, Ubuntu trusty uh, name for my host name. So um, next we're going to talk about buffer sizes. So libpcap has a buffer and tcpdump has the ability to set a value for that buffer to increase the size. So first of all, let's go ahead and clear the screen. Let's just sniff on my interface again. And I'm gonna press control C and you can see that uh, we've captured a number of them. That is packets that tcpdump was able to process. We also dropped a number of them by the kernel. That is the buffer over uh, filled. It, it was a buffer overrun and the packets that uh, were lost were 111 dropped by the kernel before they were able to pass the filter and then make its way to uh, being captured and processed. So how do we prevent that? Well, one way is we can um, specify a larger buffer size. We can do that with the dash B option, or we can do the GNU long format and do bash dash buffer size. And the value is in kilobytes. So what we're going to do is we're going to set uh, 4096, and that's equivalent to four megabytes for the buffer size. And I'm gonna do something to set the timeout, timeout uh, five seconds. So this is gonna run TCP for five seconds and then it's gonna quit. Okay, so we can see the 86 packets were dropped by the kernel. Now let's try to increase the size once more. Let's do 8196. This will be eight megabytes. And this time we have zero packets dropped by the kernel. And just check if that was uh, just an anomaly. Go ahead and run it again. Oh, just we got four this time. So we can actually go further, but let's just do it one more time. Yep, zero. So the more we increase the buffer, the less likely we'll be able to drop packets. Okay, so um, the other final thing is interrupts. Whenever you print uh, data to the screen like this, that is whenever the packets are printed line by line, you actually generate an interrupt and the computer has to take control of the interrupt from the terminal and to do to write the stuff to the screen. So you have to go back and forth between context switches more often. So to prevent that, what we can do, or to demonstrate that, let's just show you, um, I'm in the same machine, I'm gonna run this tool called VMstat, which is gonna pr uh, print statistics for the system. What we're looking for is under the system column, the IN field, and this stands for interrupts. So you can see that right, right about now we have interrupts that are about less than 50. So we're gonna go ahead and run TCP dump again. Get rid of the timeout here. And you can see now that it went from 16 here, go ahead and quit it, 16 to 200, or 2,623 interrupts per second, and then increased to 3,000, 4,000. So it's actually causing a lot more work for the system. You can also notice that the context switch column went up. It was uh, 45, 118, 16 here, and then it jumped up to eight, 
15,000, and then 25,000, etc. So doing that causes a lot more work for your processor. So if we go ahead and run this again, and we're still um, processing all these is over here. Now we'll go ahead and quit this. And we can expect to see a drop off now as we have seen. So there was 3,699 interrupts. Now we have uh, we drove down to 21, 11, 15, back to the normal rate. So to, to alleviate this when you're capturing packets, what you want to do is you typically just want to write it to a file. Just take everything and write it to a file. Um, it's called bus.pcap. And just let it do its thing. It'll capture the packets, and then when you're ready, you can actually just read it in with tcpdump-nr. So let's talk about another option that can be used to increase uh, tcpdump's performance. That is the snap length option. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to run uh, tcpdump and we're going to specify the ETH0 interface and set a timeout and we'll count the number of packets lost here. Set it for um, two seconds. Okay, and we lost 129. And by default, TCP dump sets the maximum snap length value of 65,535. And this is the number of bytes from the end of the packet, or let's say the number of bytes that TCP dump wants to keep. That is, it has to it has to process each one of those bytes. So if you limit that number of bytes to a lower amount, it has to process less, resulting in better performance. So by default, it is 65,535. Let's go ahead and set it using the dash S option to something smaller like 96. You can see here, I have zero packets now. We'll do it once more. And again, uh, zero packets. So in cases where you know you don't need the full size of the packet, that is TC does not need to truncate it with the snap length option, then you can kind of specify which area are based on the number of bytes where in your packet you need to um, keep. And it truncates it at towards the end to the beginning. So if we say uh, 96 bytes, it's gonna keep the first 96. Everything after is gonna be removed. So that's just one way to, to keep track or to uh, lower the amount of data that TCNet has to process. It also lowers, the, since it lowers the amount of data, when you write files to an output, if, when TCNet writes a file or a new PCAP file, it actually takes up less space because there's less bytes. <laughs>